what's happening what's happening in this video i decided to do a video tutorial for a walkthrough guide that i posted online about the ninja skills room for try hack me so if you're new to the try hack me platform and at a beginner level and trying to understand that's why i created this video so hopefully you get some value out of it or even if you ran through the room if you want to see how i did it and everything or if you're interested in it that's why I created this video as a, as just as another resource. I'm just trying to post it and, and get this uh, good, good content out there for you. I'm the Network Ninja, the host and creator of this channel. And like I always say, I, I want to create and establish a community uh, like a mastermind of individuals, IT pros, all trying to level up and train on our skills on a daily basis. So... That's why I created a channel, so hopefully we all can experience personal and professional growth at the highest level. So I appreciate everybody for tapping in. We'll jump straight into it. I already got the lab set up. You know, I already have the room and everything set up for you, so we just going to glitch over there. So check me out. Boom. We got the room right here. When you first log in, you're going to have this. This is just basically... The room, Ninja Skills room, telling you what it's about, giving you who the leaders and everything. Your boy Network Ninja at the bottom. But listen, I'm new. I'm new to this. I ain't true to this. You feel me? Not yet, anyways. But I'm trying to master. I'm trying to get these skills up. So here we go. Uh, it's just one task. Most of the rooms in here I've seen are more than one task. So this is definitely beginner level. And I thought it'd be. Just definitely a dope idea to just jump in and do this for like an intro video for the playlist for anybody trying to get their feet wet, so to speak. So the first thing first, they give you some instructions about how to log in and everything. I'm already logged in right here. As you can see, you just get a Linux box. You could also SSH to it by launching an attack box, but um, this is a simple lab, but hopefully y'all can see it. It's kind of probably small. That's the difference. You could change the size and everything. I didn't really mess with this, but either way, so you get a list of files, about 11 to 12 of them. And the aim is to answer the questions as efficiently as possible about each of the files. So the first question, I got all the answers and everything. So the first question is, which of the above files are owned by the best group group? So this room is strictly about the find command as you will find out and really just messing with the syntax just a lot of research on the find command syntax just trying to build up that skill because in um, security research you're definitely going to be going through file systems and everything and you need to know how to uh, work with those files in the file systems especially linux so Let's jump over into the box. So the first command here, you're just going to do find. Four slash is just telling it for the root directory to start there for the file system search. So it's going to search through the whole file system for these files that we're about to give to the find command. You can specify what type of data you're looking for, whether it's a directory or a file. We're going to do file for this specific question and then you, this option here the dash group option this option lets you specify a name of a file that has a group name best dash group so the only other thing that you have to do here is throw this part of the syntax which I still have no clue what it means but look I got the answer, but I just want to show you what it does when you run it without that part of the syntax, whatever it's called, whatever it's doing, whatever it's telling the operating system. All those characters are saying, basically, all these files is running through the file system and it's saying I got permission denied. So all that does right here, when you tack that on at the end, it's just saying to tell the operating system, don't do that. Don't let me ignore all of that. Ignore all of these permission denied. So, all right, that's question one. Question two, it starts getting a little bit more complex. So, let me take a pause for the cause. 
and shot the boy out right here. So he did a write up right here. So if you go, you can look at his write up and he breaks it down. The same thing that I'm doing, just the write up for, you know, the visual for the readers, you know, the people that like to read instead of do the audio or however you like to learn, you know, the different, the kinesthetic. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, for question number two, it, it started, this one, it started getting more complex. This one kind of beast right here. So which of the files contain an IP address? So basically, we're going to have to go through all of these files and use the find command to find which file has an IPv4 address in it. So I already got the syntax thrown up here. So we run it and we see 1.1.1 is the IPv4 address. OIMO is the file name. So to break down the syntax the best as I can, again, I ain't, I, I'm new to this. I ain't true to this quite yet, right? So I'm just a beginner myself, but this is for all the beginners out there. And definitely any of the gurus watching, definitely put us on game, whatever whatever um, I'm messing up on or whatever. So the find command and then you got the uh, forward slash that, that tells the operating system to start at the root directory of the file system and search. Oh, we already know all of that part, right? And then we're grouping it all here. This is the part we don't know, right? So we just got to group all of this, which this escape character force uh, the backward slash is telling it to group everything in these parentheses. The dash O is telling the find command to print out only the matching lines to the console. Then once you get to that, you got this other option right here. Dash exec means execute. And that's just an option for the find command to execute another command. The next command is grep. If you don't know what grep is, it's just a command to match uh, specific information in files pretty much. So. If you want the, you know what I'm saying, technical details, you gotta go through the man pages, Google research, all of that kind of stuff. So the grep command right here, uh, when it finds the files and everything in this list, it's gonna do a dash E option. And this option is just saying to match a regular expression. This is the regular expression right here. This regular expression is for an IPv4 address specifically. So this is a good one to keep in your bag. Dash O again, print exactly only the matching line out to the console. This star is to tell the find command, I don't care, alphanumeric character match them all. Then the curly braces just tells it to group everything that I, I put in with the escape character. Another escape character again, backwards slash semicolon telling the find command hey stop running that command and then this part two whatever with the null and everything somebody need to come up with a name it i don't know what it is but that's what that um or it tells it to ignore all of those permissions denied from earlier right so so boom now we're gonna move on to the next question which of the file has a sha one hash of whatever blase squase so if you do find and everything we're keeping the same syntax right but this time we're telling execute the sha1 command sha1 just says uh give me the information of the sha1 hash in the file and that's exactly what we need to find the sha1 hash in the file so that works out perfectly and then again these characters are just more information for the operators to tell the find command what to do. Again, we don't know the name for that one right there. 9D54, it's in this file name. So that's that's a good you know answer to that question. Next question, question number four, which file contains 230 lines? We're gonna keep the same syntax, right? But this time, the new command that we got that we're going to feed it is WC to count lines and dash L I believe is to uh, to like output the lines or something like that I'm not sure what that dash L option is but that's what the fun of all of this is is research 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 right so as you see 209 lines in all of these files the thing is is that there's one file that's missing 
and that's the BNY0 file, which I answered over here. So the answer is saying that basically there's something wrong with this file that it doesn't contain 230 lines, so it didn't show up in the output. I guess that's the logic to that answer. It kind of threw me off. But again, shout out to the write-ups that people do to help us through these rooms because you got to learn. You feel me? Next one, which files owner, this question number five, which files owner has an ID of 502? So for this one, you're going to use the ls command, which is to just list the files, but you're going to use the dash L option for long listing and then the dash N option. And I believe the dash N option gives you that column. That's what it's for, right? It gives you that column for the ID. Uh, for the files owner ID right there. So right here, all of the, the third column is the file owner's ID. And the only ID with 502 in there is X1UY. Boom, is right there. Which file is executable by everyone? It's just testing your knowledge of the permissions over here. So the last set of characters over here in this column are reserved for the group. So it's asking us which files executed by everyone. So this is everybody right here. And X is for executable. So that's the answer to that last question. That's question number six. And you completed the room. So pretty much you get a correct answer. You complete the room. It's one task. I felt like it was a good start of one to get your ninja skills. It's kind of tough, especially that regular expressions and all of that. You know what I'm saying? But after messing with the syntax, now if you ever get caught on some more fine commands, you can just apply this same um, the same room, these skills to that uh, new room. Which leads me on to my last thing here. I just want to point out I did a write up myself. So yeah, please tap in Network Ninja. You know what I'm saying? Medium.com. I'm gonna put the uh, I'm gonna put the description at the bottom. I put all the reference links that I use to research and everything right there. Everything's right there for you. Yeah, so that's about it, man. Y'all turn me up. You seen the blog post? You feel me? Go visit that. Use that as a resource as you're learning and growing. If you find some resources, put me on. You feel me? And uh. Help me learn and grow myself. The next room I'm going to do is definitely going to be another Linux room. I'm, I'm really weak in Linux. So if you're a beginner like me, man, tap in and uh, follow me on this journey and uh, use this as a resource, basically. As always, you know, help me out with the algorithms. Turn your boy up, you know, put them balls on and everything. This is the first of many. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. As always, Ninja, vanish.